Welcome, everybody. Don't save Mario. Oh, shit. No, do save Mario. Don't save her. God damn it. I mixed it up already. Viral hit sensation. We're capitalizing on it several weeks later. Don't save her Mario. Go look it up. Only the one minute and 27 second version of it. Not the four minute weird creepy Sims version. Welcome to Respawn Name Fire, the kick-ass Reverend gaming podcast brought to you by Affable Idiots. I'm one of your hosts, Chad, Michael. I'd still save her. Ennis, we've got here our usual co-host, Adam. Don't save her. Save her. It's up to you. You decide. You have the power. Captain Planet Gumbert, how are you? What you saying, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and on screen with us this time. Are we on screen? I actually, I didn't even open up Twitch. I can't tell. Are you on screen, I'm on Joel? screen. I'm on Joel! Screen. Joel! I don't know if he'd save anyone uh, because he's, I don't, I don't know. He'd. Campo I'd save Toadette. I'd save Toadette, man. Toadette was getting it in that video. Oh, dude, she shits money. Of course, you <laughs> yeah. would want. You would want. I, I, th I think no. I think that the money was going to her ass. I don't think it was coming from her ass. It's one of those you money so? guns. No, I, I felt like it was like coming out of her ass and hitting Toad in the face. That'd be wild. <laughs> I'm she pretty was sure that's. Pool. Why, why would the oh, money be I know, coming out of her? I know. I know. Because it it's again. Nintendo. Yeah, we gotta watch it again. YouTube.com/slash Mario. I'll pull it up on the stream. <laughs> Okay, yeah, pull it up on the stream. Oh yeah, because because Toad's Toad's flanging that money, dude. I thought it was being sprayed in his face, and he was like, "No, no, you can see his hand moving. You can see his hand moving. It's not like well, he's his hands moving because he's trying to swat it out of his face." No, no, that's Chad, that's not how. That's I'm not just how telling you what work. I saw. I'm just telling you legally what I saw according to the law. Oh, legally. here we go. We're about to see it. We're about to see it. Wait a minute. No, it's a little later than this. It's it's going to her. This it's makes for great for audio her. content. Who say this? Wait a minute. What are you talking? I don't. You're not playing it on stream anymore. I I did play it on stream. What are you talking about? I, I, I saw it got to Princess Peach, and then I, I don't know what stream you're out. watching, but it's not this one. I'm, I'm watching twitch.tv slash the people need to see it again while I tell them that you can watch us live on twitch.tv slash affable idiots every Sunday ish. Oh shit! It is going to her butt. That is one hundred percent. It's just so fast. It's like one of those things where if you look at a, the wheel of a car as it's moving, it kind of looks like it's going backwards. No, that's coming out of her ass. No. No, that's going into her ass. Get out of here. Maybe it's both. Look at Adam. It's going in and going out at the same time. Yeah, you can catch this and watch things going in and out of Toadette's ass Sunday evenings uh, at 8.30-ish Eastern time. You know, I'm always logged on a little bit early. You never know what you're going to get. Um, you can do that, or you can catch us on demand Tuesday mornings, 9 a.m. Eastern time on podcast services and YouTube. And, uh, you might notice Alexander Kozina is not here today. We also don't have a goose that represents him. We don't know where he is. Alex has disappeared. It's, Mario is missing. Like it's that game, but it's cozy. If you see him, if anyone has pictures of cozy in the wild, tweet them at us. Whatever that looks like to you. If you go to your local try-on house restaurant and there's all the geese out in front and you take a picture of that and you tweet it at Respawn Aim Fire, I don't care what it is. If you feel like you have seen Cozy in the Wild, tweet at Respawn Aim Fire. If you're listening to this eight months from now, 200 years from now, I don't care. Tweet it at us and say that you found Cozy. Um, yeah, we've got Joel here. We've got Adam here. We're going to talk through a bunch of fun stuff today all about Gamescom, what we've been playing. we got a great little game that's random and fun that we're going to play. Um, it's going to be a good time. So thanks for being here with us. Let's start with our main quest. Talking about Gamescom. Biggest Gamescom new is what this says. And I am Ron Burgundy. There we go. News. Thank you. Uh, this comes from multiple at IGN. We've kind of consolidated things that were Gamescom, but also things announced at Opening Night Live and things that weren't also necessarily Gamescom, Opening Night Live, but all of those kind of things kind of condensed here. We've got a long list of things here. I'll go kind of item by item. I will pause for approximately 1.73 seconds. And if nobody says anything, we'll move on to the next one. And I tried to cut out the bullshit so we don't have things about... Cut it. Cut it. Cut out the bullshit. Nailed um, it. My, my friend Adrian's son, once I saw a video of him doing that exact same thing, and that kid oh. was like two and a half years old, and it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. Going places. Gearbox. This is how we opened it, right? We opened game opening night live with Gearbox's announcement, I'm pretty sure. 
confirms Borderlands 4 is in development and will be released sometime next year. So 2025. So not only is it in development, but it's coming out sometime in the next 16 months. Coming off the hot success of that movie, Borderlands. Um, I'm actually pumped for this one. Borderlands, I don't care what the movie did, and it was ugh, meh at best, but the games have always been fun. Uh, so I'm pumped to see whatever this is. Even though, who knows what this is, because Gearbox has been, where, they got bought by Epic, and then Epic sold them to THQ Nordic, or Embracer, or something like that. Or, I don't even know the status of Gearbox and where this is being developed, so I don't even know. I'm sure Randy Pitchford is still involved. But anyway. No, they were four. embraced, and then I think they went back to 2K or something like that. Or maybe they're just free in the wild now. They're not embraced anymore is all that I remember. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fun fact, before Cozy was part of this podcast, he helped me get the platinum trophy for this game. Ooh. Yeah. Was a, we're sorry, not Borderlands 4, Borderlands 2. Um, oh, by the Call way, Duty. I was... Yeah. Well, two I, I, was, I was talking to Matt in Dallas... Go, go like the day this was announced uh-huh. we were playing call of duty and we were just talking about how you know that when they plan to announce this there they're like oh man we're gonna come fresh off the hot new borderlands movie everybody's <laughs> gonna be talking about borderlands and then we're gonna reveal borderlands 4 and the hype is gonna be through the roof and man were they wrong yeah i mean the, the, the hype for the game don't get me wrong borderlands is fun it it I don't care about the story that much. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I just like playing the game. The guns are cool. I enjoy co op in it a lot. It's a ton of fun. But I just don't really care for the story. Um, when we played it, yeah. I specifically, we made it a barf. It was a, well, it was a barf game. But I specifically put the caveat, it is a barf game, but we have to play it co-op. Because it was Holden playing nice. it for the first time. And I was like, you are not allowed to play this solo because this game sucks solo. We have to play it co-op. And then it turns out I hated playing him, playing with him because he didn't use any fucking abilities. And he's like, no, the gunplay, it's just the foundations. It's got a good, got to play with the, fa- this whole game is fucking skills. Um, yeah. So Very either, good. yeah, either they thought they were coming off of the hot movie or maybe they were just like, oh, the movie's fucking bombing. And we don't have a lot to say about Borderlands 4 other than it's coming. So can you whip up a trailer with just some planets and we'll just say Borderlands 4 is coming and take people's mind off the movie? We knew it was happening. I was so. By the way, so it's 2021. Gearbox was bought by Embracer Group, and then okay. earlier this year they were reacquired by Take Two, so okay. they now work for 2K. Um, no, I'm excited. Like I said, these games are fun. I don't care about story or Randy Pitchford being weird on Twitter or any of that. That's fine. Games are fun. I'll check it out. I, it kind of makes me want to go back and check out uh, Wonderlands because I was always interested in that. Will Arnett's in it, but I just never, never yeah. got to play it. Is that the Tiny, Tiny Tina one? Yeah, Tiny Tina. Yeah. I, it's I played basically through like D&D. half of that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think I beat it, but it was cool. Yeah. yeah. That was one of those many, many, many games that Matt, Dallas, and I, and Brent all started together. We played it for like two nights and <clears throat> never got around to finishing it. It's fun, though. Yeah, yeah. and I, I definitely, definitely got to finish that. It'll definitely come out next year, by the way, just thinking, because Wonderlands was 2022, but that wasn't only Gearbox. Like, they had other companies helping on that, and it's a smaller title. So, people are like, it's too soon. It's like, no, nah, four or five years is probably more than long enough for Florence for So, yeah, exciting. Let's go. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 appeared at Gamescom ahead of its October 25th release date. Representatives at Raven Software showed off one of the missions in the game's single-player campaign. Bill Clinton was there. That's the second time we've seen Bill Clinton on stage with Jeff Keighley. Well, (laughs) his likeness, or not his likeness necessarily, but at least his name. He's been on stage in some, he's existed (laughs) in some fashion on stage with Jeff Keighley. Uh, Campaign, I don't really, I will play it because it's on Game Pass, so that'll be the first one I'm playing forever. But it's just, so the multiplayer stuff leaked, I think, earlier this week or last week or something like that. I'm like, ooh, that looks like it's going to be fun. Okay. So I'm looking forward. I mean, on Monday, Call of Duty Next happens, right? I think tomorrow. So Yeah, tomorrow for us. Yeah. We'll know soon That's enough. when, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see a bunch of stuff on the game. We did see, uh, well, not, well, yeah, people were streaming it, like the zombies at least, right? We've seen the zombie stuff. Yeah, people have done zombie previews. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Dope. Goat Simulator is getting remastered. Um, the game, sure, whatever, but the trailer, y'all. It was a great trailer. The whole time I was like, what is this game? Is this... Is this Max Payne remastered? What is it? Who is this person walking? Is that? Oh, that doesn't look like Max Payne. What the fuck? It... Very end of it. Goat Simulator getting remastered. They are the Wouldn't masters they... of trailers. Let me tell you. They did Goat Simulator 
three. They skipped two, right? Yes, that was the joke. And the they Goat Simulator three was, was a Island parody of the Dead Island two trailer. That was so good too. Yeah. Well, no, God. didn't they release? They released one that was multiplayer though. That was assumed to be two. It just wasn't called two. Right. I don't know. I like Goat Simulator so. MMO or something is what they call oh, it. Oh, that's there is a weird Yeah, you're right. There is like a Goat Simulator MMO that's like maybe that's just a mobile game. I'm gonna Google Goat Simulator on Wikipedia. Let's see what nonsense comes up here. <laughs> but no, yeah, I mean Goat I'm looking on simulator. here, the Goat Simulator. No, they just went from one to they went from one to three. No, it was called Goat MMO Simulator. Okay. I don't know what the fuck that is. Is that the same IP, or is that just somebody capitalizing on that generic ass name? Could be, could be. No idea. Anyways. Goat uh, MMO. Okay, it, the advertising. Oh, it's a mobile looks game. All the That's same what it is. Uh, it's a mobile version. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, Goat MMO Simulator is the third official map released on November 2014. So it's, it's a, a weird map company. for Goat Simulator, but that's. Okay, it's confusing. So, okay, Good okay, trailers, okay, though. Okay, okay, okay. Good trailers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good shit. Uh, Dying Light, the beast. Techland is once again venturing into the parkour, the heavily zombie-infested world of Dying Light, announcing today that a third entry is currently in development. Interestingly enough, not called Dying Light 3. Dying Light, the beast. Is, no. Is this, I, I, this is like an offshoot, though, right? It's like a yeah. Story. yeah. I, don't, I think I don't it's like a ha- like a half well. price title. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's forty dollars uh, okay. is what they said. So, which honestly I prefer because I felt like Dying Light Two was just a little too long, personally. But I enjoyed the Dying Light game, so I'm sure I'll try this out at some point. Yeah, I, I like more. I know people have talked about it, especially with you know games take five or six years and a hundred million dollars to develop. People are like, oh, I'd like shorter games. Da, 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 da. You know, most people don't do it, but I would like a half size of every game. I think that'd be fun. Like a Miles Morales, Dying Light the Beast. Just give me those kind of things once in a while. I'm down for that. Because yeah, I'm with you. Like, I haven't played Dying Light 2 because like, I don't want to play 70 hours of a fucking Dying Light video game right now. Um, but if it's like 30 for half the price, maybe. I think they said like 20 hours. Perfect. But I could be wrong. Love it. Mm-hmm. Do that in a heartbeat. Lost Records Bloom and Rage reveals f- Bloom and Rage. I don't want this to be like a Holland Oats thing where I've now convinced a bunch of people it was Holland Oats. And this is not Bloom and Rage. This is Bloom Ampersand Rage. Reveals first gameplay trailer and release date. Lost Records Bloom and Rage will be released in two parts. The first part is notable because it is on February 18th, the day after my birthday. While the second tape will launch on March 18th the day after my middle school friend Tony's birthday. Embark Studios. (laughs) I got a quick question. How do you know your friend from middle school's birthday? Well, because he was my best friend at the time. And also anyone who has a birthday that is like on the 17th, for some reason that sticks in my brain. Because I'm on the 17th, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, one of Dallas's kids, I won't name their name because I don't know. I don't want to dox his kids. Jeremy. But <laughs> one of them is May 17th, I believe. I, I, someone's the 17th. Okay. If it's not one of Dallas's kids, it's, I don't know, the president or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somebody's, somebody's kid's birthday is on that day. Well, Okay, now I'm going to bring up my calendar and figure out whose kid's birthday is on the 17th yeah, of May. May 17th. I was a real quick, though, I did put this mostly in here. Again, it's the people who made, um, not Dying Light, Jesus Christ, uh, Life is Strange. I believe it's one of those developers. Looks like one of those. I basically put this in here because I think Jerrica's excited it. for this. And, you know, Dallas's shout out to kid. Jerrica. It is Dallas's kid. Nailed it. Yep. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to Jerrica for uh, her new journey doing more content stuff. Mm. Talked about that on Kind of Funny. So Yeah. If you haven't seen the Kind of Funny Games Daily from, uh, what was it, Tuesday? Last Monday? Friday? Last Thursday? Week. One of the Wednesday, days last Thursday. week. Wednesday, Thursday, happy days. Um, yeah, go see it. She was on it again, talking about how she is pulling back on her current career so that she can spend more time doing what she loves, and that is streaming and talking games with people. And uh, so, yeah, pretty cool little journey. Proud of you. And never playing Destiny with you again. She did not say that. <laughs> she said she's taking a little bit of a break. She's stepping back from Destiny. That's all she said. I think, I think most of us are. Taking a break from Destiny. Yeah. Except so, for Chad. 
<laughs> so I, I texted in the group chat, the Destiny Raid group chat the other day, like a week and a half ago. I said, hey, all I need is the master version of, of Salvation's Edge. Crickets. Nothing. nothing. Then like a week and a half later, Connor says, so uh, I miss you all. We should all play something Destiny related. And I was like, yeah, I'd love to. Audrey's like, yeah, great. Jarek was like, oh, I, I miss you all too. I can't wait for us to be able to play together. And Joel has not said anything in that <laughs> chat for four or five weeks. He has here, not said here's a my word. Thing. Here, here's my thing is I don't want to get roped into doing a master raid, right? Like all I'm we got to do is the boss. All we got to do is the boss. It, I, dude. And how much did we struggle with that boss? Even not. On oh, master. but now there's a new meta with sniper rifles and solar and new artifact perks that are like going to make it uh, so know, easy. Make a new build, Joel. It's easy. Yeah. It's new build. Easy. And don't worry. The meta gets changed up in just 36 hours. So yeah. all the, you, everything, yeah. you know, changes and <laughs> you have a 30, you have a 30, <laughs> There's going to be one meta build that's like, yeah, you better do it in the next 36 hours because they are going to patch yeah. this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Joel's stepping back. Jerrica's <laughs> still. She's excited to play with us eventually someday. Um, J no, no, J Jerrica's all talk. If you organize that to be like, hey, we're going to do it this week. That's true. She, that's true. She'd have a reason. No, she, to she'll be like, I'll be there. I'll be there. It'll be late, but I'll be there. And then right after and then, she'll and go, then the so day she'll be like. Yeah, she'll be like, if you guys want to replace me, I won't be mad. And then you're going to yep. be like, we literally have nobody else. Or she'll get in there and like 15 minutes in, she'll just be like, I got to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so congrats to Jericho. I think Alex did a tap back. I think Alex did like a thumbs up tap back or a heart or something like that. He didn't say words, but he definitely, he engaged. But I did notice Joel did not. And when I brought up Out, uh, Outriders the other day too, I was like, Outriders, Outriders. Joel completely silent. Mm. I, I played, called him I on it. And he's like, I already played Outriders. I was like, yeah. all right, man. All right. And that's that's a game. It. It's a one and done for me. It didn't stick. All right. All right. Uh, what the fuck are we even talking about? Embark Studios has provided an update to its upcoming free to play shooter, Arc Raiders. Embark, who made the finals, it's another game that, mm -hmm. great game. Wish I had time for it. Uh, revealing the game will be out sometime next year. What's really interesting, too, is like, all right. And Bark Studios is here to tell us about Arc Raiders in this game that we talked about. And you're going to see some more. And it's like, we know nothing more about it other than next year. And the trailer showed us almost nothing other than like some new animation of like this retro colors on a screen. The funny thing, the only reason I included this is because that game was, a, was the one more thing at the Game Awards 2021. The last time we got a big... Before we even knew about the finals. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. <laughs> That's, fucking That's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. All right. Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 releases new trailer, arrives on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S on September 9th. Where do I jump in on this game? On this series? Because right this looks fucking badass. And I've it's never a played a Warhammer game. It's a lost cause for me. I don't think I'll ever jump in. How is this How is this related to when you go into like a game shop and it's just nothing but Warhammer that's, minis and paints? How is this related to know. all of that? Here's what I'll say. Yes, there's backstory, but whatever. But you can just play Baldur's Gate 3. You don't have to have played everything that D&D &D has ever made to be able to play Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, you know I want to play Baldur's Gate 3, but I, I, that's like no, but that's 120 what I'm saying. You don't need to play Baldur's Gate 1 or 2 or play every written oh, gotcha, adventure gotcha, gotcha, for D&D gotcha. to play Baldur's Gate. You can just play Baldur's Gate 3. I so thought you were Warhammer telling games, me to you can play... Just play the, you can just play the Warhammer game. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you were saying, in order to play Space Marine 2, you gotta play do Baldur's Just Gate play Baldur's first. Gate 3 instead. No, no, no. no. I'm very okay, excited okay. for this game, but yeah, you don't... I, I think if you wanted to play the first one, you could. But Warhammer, you can Imperium for the for the Empire. There's bugs. It's fine. You don't got to worry about it. Isn't okay. Dallas super into Warhammer? I don't. I don't know. Or like one of the games. There or something? aren't there like seventy five different genres of Warhammer game too, and they're all very different. Oh, there's, yeah. yeah, they make like two Warhammer games a year. Like it's fucking. <laughs> it's wild. very confusing. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what to do with my hands this one you tarsier you, you do that's what i think that's what did it for me because we're in the middle of playing spoilers for ah, i didn't put that on my fucking thing this week don't okay don't look at that I won't um tarsier studios the developers behind the first two little <laughs> nightmares i don't know what i was about to say mermaid the first two little nightmares games announced his next project reanimal random no it's reanimal right not this typo i think okay. i don't know yeah, whoever typed this about. Reanimal, yeah, is a new horror adventure game where a brother and sister duo will have to escape an island that used to be their home all while looking for their missing friends. What's really interesting, I was watching this trailer having, I don't know if I've seen Reanimal somewhere before, I don't, I didn't recognize it, but I was watching this trailer not knowing what it was and like halfway through it, I was like, 
Is this Little Nightmares? Should I go back and play Little Nightmares? Is that a thing that I should do? Have I? Is that good? And then they said reanimal at the end. I was like, oh, no, this is very different, but this looks dope. Yeah, but they're basically like, hey, we did Little Nightmares. What about this? What about this? Non, we got, you know, Little Nightmares at home. Um, <laughs> but no, it's from the, the studio that made those games. So that'll be good. Again, I can't play these games because they're scary and the people's arms are too long. But I know a lot of people are excited for that. So, Oh, I, I understand completely. People's hands are too big. Can't play the game. Yep. Looking Thanks at you. What's that Assassin's game Dishonored that was made? Thinking Dishonored, of. that's the one, yeah. Firaxis, who's most famous for Marvel's Midnight Suns, reveals first look at gameplay for Civilization VII, a new game you've probably never heard of from that franchise. Uh, the game will be released on February 11th, six days before my birthday. 2025. When did Civ VI come out? I don't know, probably in my birthday. or something like that? Th there was one in between, though, right? Like, wasn't Civilization beyond in between was that a thing i think that was an expansion where you like went to space or some shit like that i don't think it was an expansion i think it was a separate game was it like when you get the toddlers in the sims and it's like a download pack holy shit civ 6 released in 2016 high like a shizer okay. I'm, i must be thinking of civ 5 so they haven't released think... a game other than marvel's ultimate i mean midnight sun since no they did an XCOM in there too okay yeah yeah because i, I remember beyond earth is that was like 2014? Earth, is that, yeah. that is 2014. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because yeah, I remember in college, uh, me and some friends were talking about potentially picking that up because we were playing a lot of Civ Five. But for some reason, I thought Civ Six was the one that came out in like 2012. But no. No, that game's going to be good. Very excited. Man, oh, wow. So um, coming to PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, Manic, Macs and Linux. God damn it. Mac and Linux devices. I was trying to mix those up in my brain. Manix. Malinux? Malinux. Uh, Marvel Rivals. Woo, y'all. Had I not already filled up my gaming league because they lied to us to our eyes. They looked in our eyes and lied to us and said this game is coming in 2025. And now they are announcing the 6v6 team-based free play shooters featuring Marvel comic characters like the Avengers is out December 6th Woo. of this year, 2024. We also got to break down the new characters, Captain America and Winter Soldier, and all heroes will be free and unlocked at launch for everyone. And forever. And forever till death do you part. This I'm is so exciting. ready to drop like $25 on a Black Panther skin. Go ahead, Joel. Yes. <laughs> like, like day of, right? Day you're one. Gonna, yeah, you're, absolutely. Yeah. You, you're spending the $60 you would have bought this game for, $70, on skins <laughs> within a week. I guarantee it. Right. Easy. It's going to be um, like a red-tinted Captain America... And then like a maroon tinted one, and there it is, sixty bucks. Yeah, this game's gonna make so much money just off cosmetics. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, this game being announced coming this year is the only reason I have not bought Concord, because with Concord coming out, I was excited to check it out. Uh, Audrey hyped it up; she's been enjoying it. But like with this coming, I know that if I bought Concord now, even though it's only forty dollars, right? Concord, yeah, it's forty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if I spent forty dollars now. I don't feel like I would get my money's worth because I'm just going to switch to Marvel Rivals easily whenever it comes out. And then I'll yep. never think of Concord again. Save that 40. Buy a Jeff the Baby Landshark <laughs> skin instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun, fun part of that kind of funny games daily that Jericho was on too. Greg Miller shames Audrey live on the show into buying Concord. Very much, <laughs> Very much so. Prime Video announces Secret Level. I, oh my God. This was the announcement of my life. I get Ooh. chills watching this every time. They announced Secret Level, an original series focusing on indies, new projects, and classic games. Uh, by original series, we mean television series on, on Amazon Prime Video. Uh, some episodes expected to appear will focus on games such as Sifu, Mega Man, Armored Core, and more. Secret Level premieres December 10th on Prime Video. I think they said 15 episodes. Yeah, I'm trying to look for the, for first like the full season. release. Because I know there is an episode that is like PlayStation Showcase or some shit like that. It's that's, fucking... That's where we saw uh, Kratos in like a real life city or some shit like that. Yeah. So I it's watched... exciting. I watched this and I saw the guy on stage talking about it first. First of all, he's he seems so pumped out. He starts crying on stage multiple times. Just like how excited he is to show everyone about it. Show it. But he was... This is a studio who usually does high-end cinematics for AAA video games. And they were it's, like, this is our blur, answer right? to, yeah. yeah I think it's and blur, they were like, yeah. this is our answer to when people are talking about like, man, they, they're watching a cutscene in the game. They're like, man, this could be a fucking movie. And they're like, yeah, it could. 
let's do that. Let's make these cinematics into these high-end TV shows. And it looks, oh, I'm so excited. One, to see characters I know and love in, in some kind of narrative thing on TV. But two, to see how they interpret some of these classic games. Like the very last shot is Pac-Man, but he's like this like little tiny Human. robot drone. On, <laughs> he looks like he's like on a fucking Wally thing. And he's, and he's just like this little thing diving off into Mars or something. Know, it looks fucking wild. I can't wait. I have the full list in front of me. We can go oh, yeah, we go. We'll be good. Pac-Man. Warhammer 40K. We were just talking about it. <laughs> Concord. That, that might have been a little preemptive to do that one. Uh, Mega Man. The Mega Man looked cool as shit. Uh, Unreal Tournament. New World Eternum, which is the Amazon game. Armored Core, which I think has Keanu Reeves in that episode. Spelunky. Honor of Kings. Sifu. Dungeons and Dragons. The Outer Worlds. Crossfire, Exodus, and then a PlayStation episode, which will feature a number of PlayStation games and characters. It's going to be a good show. Fucking Sorry. pumped. December 10th, the day after my dad's birthday. <laughs> so many birthdays. <laughs> I, I guarantee you I know how the conversation went. They were like, hey, uh, we want to let you use these PlayStation IP for an episode, but if you want them, you also have to make Concord have its own episode. Yeah, yeah. Like, can we That's put Concord exactly in the background happened. of the PlayStation episode? No, it needs its own. Okay. <laughs> no, it, it needs its own. We need to build hype. Is Do you think this is... Wasn't there a, a God of War TV show in production at Amazon? Do you think this yeah. is what that is? Like, this is just... It will be a piece of this, and it was, it's not no. anything else? I think that's a standalone project, because that was announced outside of this. So. Cool. I, I think this is, like, best case scenario for this, because... Imagine if they only made a show based off of one game, right? Like, that's going to use all their resources to make, like... It, it would be, like, the Warhammer show, right? For, like, five years. They'd just be making Warhammer. I love yeah. that it's an anthology thing that, you know, they're kind of one-offs from each game. And I'm sure in the future they can make a sequel to one of these, right? Like, say the Mega Man one is super popular and people love it and they want to know what happens next. Um, they could definitely oh, they make a fucking make another Zero episode. one? Oh, or just like a like a Nintendo Dogs episode, but Rush from Mega Man is in it. <laughs> also, like how they just some of these are like really weird. Like obviously the one based off of an Amazon property makes sense. Sony, them Amazon and Sony obviously have a working class, you know, so it makes sense. But like Armored Core getting one, Sifu getting one, and Outer Worlds. I'm like, yeah, give me this weird shit. I'm yeah. all about it. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. It also will like. Maybe it'll inspire me to play some of these series. I don't think I've ever played Spelunky. I've, you know, last year I wanted to play Armored Core 6, but there were so many other things I didn't never get around to playing it. So I, I don't know. Maybe it'll make me want to play Concord. Okay. I don't know. We'll see. Four days earlier, Marvel Rivals will come I was going to say, you've already yeah, played yeah, it. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> and that's the one, that's the, that's the fucking thing about Concord is that the argument was, I'm, I'm, none of my friends are going to be playing it. So therefore, just like Killer Clowns, I'm not going to play this game. And yeah, all my friends are gonna be playing Marvel Rivals, not Destiny Two with me. Camouflage Studios, <laughs> Camouflage and Oculus Studios provided a new gameplay trailer for Batman: Arkham Shadow. Alongside a trailer, we also learned that the actor Roger Craig Smith reprises his role in Arkham Shadow. Batman: Arkham Shadow will release this October exclusively for Meta Quest Three. This game, they looks like it looks like they captured the spirit of the Arkham games in VR in a very authentic way. If I had a MetaQuest 3, which I will never have, I would be so pumped to put this on my face, but I unfortunately will never get to play it. it is it only the but 3? It not the, you can't play it on the 2? Just only the MetaQuest 3, yeah. For the moment. Well, it's probably made just for MetaQuest 3. Yeah, yeah. There's no yeah. way that that's like a system-selling game, is it? Do you think? I don't know. I mean, that's the most popular platform, so if they can get one exclusive a year to keep those people happy, you know, yeah. what else do they need to do? I feel like 95% of people in that ecosystem have the Quest 2 and don't yeah. feel the well, need sure, to Well, sure, yeah. They're trying to make you upgrade with Batman. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. They also, no, they've, they've talked about how they've got the Quest 4, you know, in development mm -hmm. that'll be coming out soon. They That's what they did. They hooked you with the Meta Quest 2 that's like, hey, this is $4.00. You can get like seven of them on the back of a pallet and just fall off a truck uh, at Best Buy. And now they're like, cool. You want cooler things with better graphics? How much Weird is the MetaQuest? All jelly? I think it's like four ninety nine. 
Yeah, I'm looking right now. Five hundred dollars at Best Buy. There's probably yeah a five hundred and twelve gig for six fifty. There's a four hundred fifty dollar version. A refurb. Is that on sale though? Oh, refurbished. It's a refurb from Meta. Maybe. I mean, Black Friday's coming up. Well, coming up. We have three months away, but I mean, this game is October, so yeah. I also do like how they got Roger Craig Smith. I bet he would probably just be the new Batman from now on, don't you think? Because he was Batman in Arkham Origins. Oh my god! Obviously, in my brain, Kevin I'm like, Conroy's well, passed away. Kevin Conroy. I, for some reason, my brain is like, "What is that guy's name?" It's not Bruce Lee. <laughs> <What's his name? laughs> no, not Bruce Lee. No. Uh, but yeah, no, Kevin Conroy passed away, so maybe it'll be Rod- Rod- He's very good. I liked him in Origins, so good that they got him back. Also, Ratcatcher is a bad guy. Come on now, we have fun. Ratcatcher. <laughs> we have fun with some bullshit out here. Let's go. Um, while Reanimal was not Little Nightmares 3, we did see Little Nightmares 3. That also showed up, uh, probably an hour after the first Reanimal trailer. Uh, this got a new trailer. No release date on it, though. On, uh, weirdly enough, Reanimal made me want to play Little Nightmares. Little Nightmares did not make me want to play Little Nightmares. <laughs> so, I've never played any of those games. I haven't either, but Reanimal looked dope, so. I think I own them all. Oh, real quick. Oh, Little Nightmares, whatever. I don't really care. It's too scary. The interesting thing is that this one is being now, so Bandai Namco bought the IP from the studio. That's why they're making Reanimal. So um, who are the people who did Until Dawn? Supermassive yeah. is making this game. I don't know why I didn't copy it over. But they oh, that's also right. I saw doing, the Supermassive logo and I was like, I didn't know they were involved with Little Nightmares. Yeah, they're doing this game. They're also making um, like the single player Dead by Daylight game. And then they're also making, they showed off at Gamescom the... Uh, was it like Project 8020? What was the name? I'm going to look it up real quick. But it was the, um, it looks like, it's um, one of the oh, it's Dark the Pictures Anthology. Dark Pictures, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it's like in space or something like that, right? Yeah, and it's basically Among Us, but if it was more of a horror game than it already is. I'm going to look up the actual name for it because I don't want to be disrespectful. Oh my god. Speaking of that game being shown off in the pre-show, I don't know if y'all watched the like 20 minutes of pre-show, but Kyle Bossman, I want him to fucking host everything. He is so funny and so like deadpan humor, and it's just, he's great. It's great. So it's called Dark Pictures Anthology Directive eighty twenty, and it features um, the lady from Captain Marvel, uh, Lashana Lynch is the the black lady from Captain. Does Marvel, it does mom. it have mature students in it? <laughs> I don't know if mature student returns <laughs> for this one, but I do like because here's the thing I've ne- I've only played one or two of the Dark Pictures anthologies. Like those are fun, but they don't feel as um high qual like not high budget as like the quarry or right until the dawn quarry. or whatever but maybe that because initially it was like we're gonna release one of these a year but now that it's been a couple years maybe they took more time maybe this one's a little more polished because i like the idea of those games but i'm like please put some more time and money into this so it's yeah. better quality so this there one was, it's been long enough i'm excited there was one of the games that me and john hansen tried playing because it came to game pass like maybe a year ago maybe even less I'm trying to figure out which one it was, but we tried. Was it a Dark Pictures one? Maybe not. Or is it the Quarry? The Quarry. The quarry. We tried playing co-op. The Quarry. The Quarry. Uh, I think that was it. But we tried playing co-op and then found out that all co-op means is that the person who hosts the lobby controls everything, and the person that joins just gets to vote. You played it in streamer mode. There are different co-op modes. Mm. so streamer mode is like i'm gonna do this on twitch and everybody tell me what decision to make and then there's a mode where at the beginning of the game you all pick there's like all right here are the 12 characters six whatever it is and you all choose and then it says all right now it is mature students time that means john you take the controller um (laughs) mature students so yeah that yeah (laughs) you chose the wrong you chose poorly speaking of you chose poorly indiana jones and the great circle Machine Games provided enough. Look at that fucking transition. I said you chose poorly without even thinking Indiana Jones, and it happened to be the next thing on our list. I'm brilliant. Machine Games provided another update to its upcoming game, Indiana Jones and the Great Soikle. We learned that the game will be released on December 9th, my dad's birthday, 2024, for PC and Xbox Series X and S, and kind of a one more thing at the end jeff Keeley announced a ps5 version is in development and that will release in spring of 2025 so just a few months later reactions thoughts 
I don't care about Indiana Jones personally. It's like one of those things that was before my time, I guess. Like I'm not super young, right? But no, I feel like the jet, like somebody <laughs> might. <laughs> Damn, hey, <fuck> Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like somebody like my older brother's age, like they got off to this kind of shit, right? This Indiana Jones like action adventure stuff, and it just like completely missed me and my friends. So I don't really care. But I mean, it's on Game Pass, so. I'll probably try it at <laughs> yeah. the very least. It doesn't look like it's going to be a crazy good game, but it could review well. Who knows? Yeah, I'm excited for it. I like machine games. I like Indiana Jones, even though I'm younger than Joel. Um, but that's the thing. Like it being on it coming to PlayStation makes sense. They want to make money. Obviously, you know that seems like the move. People are making money by putting your games at the places. It is what it is. Um, but as far as the game, though, yeah, it being on Game Pass is definitely a big boon for me because I'm like, oh, I absolutely played on Game Pass. Because, um, like, think if it's like, I'm hoping for the best. Obviously, I think Machine Games makes very good games. But if it's like an eight, I'm like, well, I can still have a lot of fun with an eight, especially if I'm not paying for it. So, yeah, I mean, I like the IP. The game looks fun. We'll see what happens. I ain't paying no money for it. Don't make me any goddamn difference. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, it coming to PlayStation being the big thing. I just think it's case by case. Like, if they think they can make more money, they will put it on PlayStation. Just like PlayStation thinks they make more money, we'll put it on PC day one. So, it is what yeah. it is. Especially now that we saw that deal whenever they leaked the stuff with Spider Man about how much of a cut Disney gets for licensing yeah. it out. It's like, ooh, maybe you have to because it's going to cost yeah. way too much money to use that license. Even though you wouldn't think Indiana Jones would be that expensive, but probably is. So. I mean, it's also like, like you said, putting in other places. The install base for Xbox is like we know that it is half of, if not less, than the PS5 this generation. So, like, if they want to make their money back on this shit, they can't rely on a <laughs> fraction of that smaller install base. You know, recouping all their costs from that. So yeah, they, it's got to go a, elsewhere. It's a smart way too. You're like, hey, if you want to play it early get our console or whatever or get our service you can play it yeah. sooner get a and fire stick wanna, yeah get a get fire stick, a fire whatever stick you yeah. do. if you want to wait we will gladly take your 70 dollars six months from now or go spend your money on pc and we'll also take that money so speaking of uh fire stick and game pass is this is game pass is everything streamable on game pass through the cloud no nah, game pass I, ultimate? I, don't I don't think everything but i think there's a lot on there um, I feel like anytime sure I want to click on something, there's a, a, a bail ability to do it. If it's actually on the service, I think you can always stream it. Because I've watched it on the console itself. And every time I go to something, it seems like it works. But I might, I'm, I mean, it might not be everything. I don't know. So, so there's a list of games that can be, and it's probably 90% of them, I would guess. Okay. I'm scrolling through this, and like you could play Crackdown 3, Costume Quest for the 360. Oh Crash yeah, if you're Bandit playing 360 games over stream. Game. You can do everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll be at my parents' house for most of the month of December for Christmas. So uh, I might stream this if we're still playing Go Gears of War, and I still have a Game Pass subscription for that time. Then I might give this a shot. But uh, honestly, for some reason, I, the first person's perspective just bugs me for this one. I hate it. But we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll give it a shot if I still got Game Pass. Uh, and the actual one last thing, one more thing at this, which I feel like was an odd choice. Uh, Mafia, the old country, is officially revealed. More details coming this December. Um, I feel like this was a weird choice to be a one more thing because I don't, like, this This franchise doesn't, isn't like a, a system seller, isn't a huge AAA franchise. I feel like it's a double A franchise that is respected, but then the last one really didn't even hit. And it, like, I put it to have a 68 or 69, I think, on Metacritic when I looked it up last week. So, like, yeah, this is a weird one more thing, but we got a little kind of a, a setting feel trailer for it. Just going to give you an idea of where we are, but not necessarily any gameplay or story details. Oh, shit. Mafia 3 was 2016. Yeah, long That's ass time crazy. ago. Well, they I did mean, do the remasters in between, yeah. though, but that was yeah. still, though. It I've never played a Mafia game, but I did download the first one because I saw it was on Game Pass, mm. the remastered version. So, And I watched the trailer. I was like, I could probably get into this. Seems interesting. I like them. I like Mafia games. I've played I played all of them but one, which is I did download the Definitive Edition, so we'll see. Again, it's interesting as one more. I mean, 
like you were saying earlier, Arc Raiders was a one more thing in a game award. So I guess you just whatever they decide to put in the one more thing goes there. But I I like them. I like the series. I'm not like, oh my god, I'm finishing or whatever kind of a thing. <laughs> I I always enjoy it. Like the story for three is like really really good. And then playing two for the first time, not knowing that. So the the gimmick with Mafia two, I think one and two was that like obviously you're, you know, like you're Italian like mobsters and like. I think it was like Chicago, then New York during Prohibition, whatever it was. But it was like if you like were speeding, the cops would pull you over, kind of a thing. But you could just like bribe the cops and leave you alone. Like it's not GTA; it's much more of a I'm playing a real mafia dude, and then the story moments are really, really cool. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I don't know, because I think it's set back, like pre World War One, maybe area. I forgot. I, I had to look it up. I, think I, I, I saw, I saw somebody make a joke like, "Is this before guns existed?" <laughs> <laughs> how old is this country but i like the idea of being in being in italy doing mafia shit before you come over to the u.s so we'll see the stories are good yeah. so there's that at least i sort of yeah that's what i've heard and then it was gameplay is like especially for three it just it was like didn't hit yeah as an open world game it's very whatever you know meaningless or whatever but the actual story and characters are surprisingly very good so dope so that's it for gamescom there's another convention coming up, though, very, very soon that I would love Adam. Go ahead and tell us about during playtime. We're talking about what we played this week and, and or what we will be doing in the coming week. Yeah. So Adam, last, what's up? Last chance to plug it. But this coming Friday, if you're listening to this podcast when it comes out or watching it live this Friday, PAX West, 9 p.m. in the Frog Theater, Super Video Game Trivia, featuring a panel of amazing people hosted by Jacob McCourt and I. And one of the people on one of those teams. So if you're in Seattle and you're at PAX West, come by and check that out. Um, we'll be having fun. I'm hoping to win. We'll see what happens. I'm not very good at trivia. Chad, you know I'm not I don't know very much well, when it comes to video games. Here's so. the here's the thing. Jacob is a very like fair host, mm -hmm. is a very fair game master. Where and and you're used to winning in a rigged game, <laughs> <That's> so <true. laughs> we don't know <laughs> whether or not you're going to do well yeah. in this. I've said this on Twitter before, but I, I'll say it online here in case anyone's listening and might be at PAX this weekend. Jacob McCord is is literally, I think, the best panel host I've ever seen. He is the best trivia host I think I've ever seen. So even if you don't care about video game trivia or the people on the panel, it's like go. It's going to be 9 p.m. in this theater. Go have a drink, have a good time. Uh, and just listen to him have a just run a great show. Hey Joel, pull that back up. I just saw that Joel was on a website there. Um, it was pretty interesting. It's called uh, west.paxsite.com. If you oh, go to the Pax West website, oh, there's my stupid face on the Pax West website. There's somebody <laughs> must have been cut out of that picture. I can't really tell. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you have a picture of that person, whoever that might be, tweet at Rizvan Aim Fire. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you see a goose on your like morning stroll or something, you could also tweet that. that, that, that oh, speaking well. of geese and packs, this isn't even in the frame. Look what I'm wearing. Oh, you are wearing the. Oh <laughs> I'm my, wearing my god! Horse shirt. <laughs> I don't even know where mine is. I don't know where mine is. It's somewhere here. I wore this all day. I wore this to Home Depot today. More <laughs> this and Crocs and gym shorts. I'm sure I, people fucking saw me and said, "What's your number?" Chad, so, some, somebody's gonna see you wearing that on the street and be like, "Oh my god." You also play this weird horse <laughs> We're going to bond over shared horse trauma. rising or whatever. Yeah. Oh, man, so good. But yeah, PAX, check it out if you're in PAX West. I will be there at that panel, 9 p.m. in the Frog Theater on Friday evening. Uh, besides that, I'm also, as you're listening to this now, check out the Boss Rush podcast. Boss Rush mm. podcast. I'm on this week's episode. Uh, there will also be people who will be at PAX West. The Boss Rush Network will be there. And I was on their podcast which will be released now, so you can go listen to that uh, and check those guys out. They're really good, really cool people. But then the game I actually played, funny, funny story, also related to PAX, besides the the, the normals, right? Like, I'm not going to keep putting EA College Football 25 in here and Fortnite um, unless something interesting happens, but I play those. That's one of the games. I've is that a dig at me? Uh, it can't be because I beat Destiny every single week, so yeah, there's that's something interesting is. that happens. No, so, I just don't have anything interesting to say. I'm like, I'm on year 11, and I'm like, I'm playing more football <laughs> and recruiting more guys. So it's like, there's nothing to say, but it's great. Uh, but there is a, a studio um, or a game by people who will be at PAX West, which I met on Twitter and uh, good friends of Jacob and all that. But playing The Big Con, if you guys have ever heard of that. It is an indie game where you basically... I. Ex 
so I'm going to look at, I think it's Mighty Yell is the name of the studio. Yes, it is. Mighty Yell Games. Um, yeah, Big Con. That's what it is. And it's basically if Doug Funny <laughs> went on a cross-country road trip to swindle people out of money, is the way that I explained that video game. You know, like this... Jack Bandit. Remember yeah, that exactly. Doug Funny character? Yeah. I love it. But, you know, the game is, uh, it's an indie game where you are a girl who's, like, finds out her mom's in trouble, like, and owes someone, like, $97,000. She's like, fuck, I gotta help my mom out. And um, she goes across the country to, like, a fictional Las Vegas and on the, along the way learns different cons to swindle people to try to get the money to help save your mom's video store. Uh, and it's really funny writing and say all the characters look like they were literally from season two of uh, Doug. Um, the art style is great. Oh, yeah. I love the art style. That's really cool. Uh, and it's fun. Having a ton of fun. You, like, pickpocket people or, like, you can, like, ask for change and, like, try to confuse them so that they give you the wrong change back and you make money and stuff like that it's fun uh fun time so i wanted to play that because that developer was going to be there and i was like hey i just played your video game good stuff so yeah the big con it is on game pass i believe so if you have game pass check out if not it's probably only a couple dollars so go pick it up check it out dope joel tell me about zimka and just uh, that is zelda minish cap oh why are you playing yeah. Zelda Minish Cap? Is that because it's our barf game for the month? It is. It is the barf game for the month. Um, I don't know if I'll beat it. I've only ever beat one Zelda game in my no two, in my entire life. Which ones? <clears throat> one was Breath of the Wild, because okay. John Hansen made me beat it, and I literally beat it the night, like literally minutes before. Uh, what's the newest one called? <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. Literally minutes before the Tears of the Kingdom released at midnight. Um, just cause I was like, I got to beat this game. If I'm going to even start tears of the kingdom at all, mentally, I got to beat breath of the wild. So I beat that. And I also beat a link between worlds, which was a fucking awesome game. I love that. Yeah. Game yeah. Lot. 3ds. A little flat Stanley. Yeah. But yeah, I've been playing uh minish cap and it's a Zelda game. I, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. It's cool. I like the art style. Um, I've been playing save your thoughts, save your thoughts, save your thoughts, save your thoughts, save your thoughts. We got a barf episode coming up in two weeks. And it's an interesting game. It's a Zelda game. There you go. Dope, dope, dope. What's the gist? Uh, Jedi Survivor. Oh! So this is another game where I'm like, I'm excited for Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, can't wait to play that. I'm on a Star Wars kick, as Chad knows, with Star Wars Unlimited, the card game and everything. Mm, um, yeah. I'm just super high on Star Wars right now. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for Star Wars Outlaw. It comes out this week. I'll probably subscribe to Ubisoft Plus just to play it, uh, since that seems like the cheapest option. Because I, I imagine I could beat it within, you know, a month or two months' time, which will, yeah. yeah, save me a bunch of money over paying for it. But yeah, Jedi Survivor is a game I started. I played maybe three hours of, and I've had it installed on my Xbox for a long time. And I'm like, I'm just gonna power through this. I have not beat it yet, but I think I'm like 75% through the game. I'm on chapter five, and I think there's six chapters. Um, but yeah, loving the game so far. It it does the weird thing, though, where it's like there will be a cliff or a box or something, and it's like I can double jump, and I can jump higher than that box, but for whatever reason, I cannot jump on that box. There's this <laughs> invisible wall. Like, I get it. Like, they got to keep you in certain areas so that the game doesn't break, but that's one thing in games that like really frustrates me sometimes. It's like, I can see where I need to go. I can jump that high and that far. Why can't I go there? But I'm playing on an easy, like easy difficulty just cause I know this game can be really hard if you up the difficulty on it, but yeah, it's cool. Uh, graphics are awesome. There's still a lot of bugs in this game. And that's part of why I stopped playing it when it first came out is cause it was very buggy. Like, even in performance mode, like, there was just a lot of drop frames when the game came out. And even still, like, I'm not noticing as many drop frames as I am just, like, characters clipping through the floor or just randomly I'll be looking at something and you could just see through it. Like, a lot of really <laughs> weird bugs. Weird bugs. Which is surprising because this game's been out for over a year now? Yeah. A year and a half? Uh, yeah, it was last year, yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah. It's a good game. I'm enjoying the story. Um, I'm interested to see how Star Wars Outlaws plays, being as, you know, you're not a Jedi. I think that's going to be a ton of fun, being a, 
What are you? Uh, not a scoundrel. Hunter. Scoundrel. Scoundrel. That's the word. Yeah, I'm excited for Star Wars Outlaws. So, this is just building my, my head uh, for that. My brother-in-law. Speaking of all the bugs still in the Star Wars Jedi games, my brother-in-law texted me a few days ago and he's like, "I'm looking to buy a new game. Have you heard anything about this Black Myth Wukong game?" And I was like, "It's getting a lot of good reviews, but everything's on PC. All the reviews are. No one's got a PS5 code. So, like, buyer beware if you buy it on PS5. I don't know how it's going to perform." And then he was like, "Ah, oh, but I could also wait for Star Wars Outlaws." And my, I would told him it was like, "Maybe wait for reviews on that one because Star Wars games the last." you know, several years have been kind of busted and janky on, at launch. And so I know this is Ubisoft versus EA. And so like, it's a completely new, you know, publisher making this game, but I don't know. I feel still like, still feel like I'm scorned by Star Wars games. The last, these, it, these two Bla battlefront two, all this kind of shit. Is Black Myth Wukong kind of similar in gameplay to uh, Jedi Survivor? Well, let me tell you all about it because that's the W on my list. I played oh. Black Myth Wukong, baby. This man. So my brother-in-law bought Black Myth Wukong. And like two hours after that text message about Star Wars and Black Myth, uh, I got FOMO and I bought it. And so <laughs> uh, this game, I'm fucking all in on this game. This game is so good. I'm playing it on PS5. I'm playing it on quality mode, which looks gorgeous. And they have quality, they have balanced, and they have performance. Uh, oh, but yeah, it FPS looks on, gorgeous. What's FPS on quality? They aren't giving you a number that is hit. They're just like, we focus on graphics and resolution. Um, and I haven't opened up the thing on the LG TV to see what the frames per second is. But it feels like maybe about 30 frames a second. My guess would be 30 if it's quality mode. Yeah, I have not, I, I have hit frame, like it slows down once during one boss battle where there was this boss who has this mechanic where he spawns literally like dozens of little tiny enemies mm. who will come at you and try to cling to you and, and blow up while they're on you. And they all move so fast and explode all at once. And that's the only time I noticed any slowdown. But aside from that, it's running really, really well. It's uh, performing really, really well. Like, I, I am loving the way that this game runs. And on the outside, Joel, to answer your question, on the outside, it looks like a Souls game. Like, the way that the levels are designed, you know, there's little resting points that you can go and reset the enemies in the world. You're going to boss battles. In fact, it is, it is boss battle after boss battle. After, you can go from one boss to the next in probably about two minutes. Uh, in fact, if you know where you're going, you can sprint to it in probably 15, 20 seconds, which I'm, I'm super into. But that's kind of where the similarities end in, in the world design and, and the, um, the, just the layout of the levels and, and the way that you're warping from campfire to campfire or point to point or whatever they call these things, shrines or whatever they are. The rest of it feels a lot more uh, like free flowy action, almost like a little bit less serious God of War combat. So... Like, God of War, I remember playing God of War 2018, and it was like, oh, shit, I actually have to think about what move am I going to use next? Am I going to use ice on this enemy, or am I going to... It was like, the regular enemies in the world, I don't feel that way in this game. They feel, like, purposeful. I'm not sneaking up on them or, like, worried that around any corner something's going to come out and smash my head off, like, in a Souls game. But at the same time, I'm just running through here, and it's like, cool, the regular minions and guys in the middle of the world, I can just run up on them, beat the shit out of them with my stick, and I keep going. Um... It has tons of upgrades, like the, the huge RPG elements that you don't see in a Souls game, and you're constantly getting skill points to upgrade the tons of different options and stances that allow you to do different types of heavy attacks. There are, of course, you know, upgrades like upgrading your health and your stamina and how much stamina gets depleted and all that kind of stuff. And then there's all sorts of magical abilities and summoning spirits and transforming into different wolf people and bees and snake guys and poison. It's... It is a cool fucking game. Um, so I'm I'm loving it a lot. The There is a stark difference, though, between running through super kind of not quite mindless, but like not really worrying about the regular ass enemies in the world. And then you get to a boss and the boss is when it switches over and it's like souls mode. Think about everything that you do. It's going to take you probably five or six tries to kill all of these guys. Uh, you are gonna have to learn their attack patterns really well. What I do appreciate appreciate about this game, though, is that there is no blocking, no block button, no parrying. Mm -hmm. It is you are dodging. Dodge you are baby. very mobile, little monkey man, and uh, that is my preferred way to play. That's why I never beat Sekiro because I couldn't get good enough at the countering, the perfect times, and all the shit. Um, 
and I, I'm just a little dodgy rolly boy all over the place. So this feels very good to me. Uh, so I'm loving it. I've played maybe two or three hours of it so far, beat a bunch of bosses, probably seven or eight of them by now. And there are some weird fucking looking ones. There's like giant gold babies with big old twigs coming out of their face that blind them. And then there are like big giant weasel looking wolf men and just a bunch of weird shit. And it's so cool. You don't remember that from I, your Chinese mythology class? Golden no, baby didn't take a guys? didn't take a Chinese mythology class about golden baby twig face guy. No. Oh, okay, interesting. I was listening to uh, Blessing talk about this on one of the kind of funny podcasts this week, uh, and he described it as he's like, "Yeah, you're a monkey with a stick," and like I immediately <laughs> I was like, "I gotta fucking I gotta look up gameplay of this game because he is just." simplifying it to an extreme here <laughs> and you can tell he's like yeah and then so i forget who was co-hosting but he's like wait so you're literally just a monkey with a stick he's like well it's a magic stick I'm like okay yeah there's definitely more to it blessing you can't just say you're a monkey with a stick yeah that is over yeah if you don't yeah. know the myth um i mean I'm you, to you are it is a it is a, a stick though you can i <laughs> i put like a little jade claw on the end of the stick to make it better though so, but I also I have like a little wolf mask now, so I have like this scary red eyes and this wolf mask when I'm so I don't look like a monkey. And, and I can also like warp like I hit a button and I like leave a little ghost of myself on the ground and the people are attacking that and then I'm like kill them real quick and it's good shit. So you know what's what's really funny about this? So since this game came out and it's like the biggest thing in the world, I think a big part of that is it being a Chinese developed game about Chinese mythology and then like it's, I think it's like for sure like the best selling game of the year. Probably by the end of the week, we'll know. Um, the funny thing about this is everyone's like, oh shit, everyone's into Journey to the West and Black Myth of Wukong now. So people are like, oh, I'm watching this movie, I'm watching this show based on that. What if I told you, unironically, in 2008, I saw a movie based off the story that this game is based off of? Could you guys guess what that movie would be? 2008. Taxi with Jimmy Fallon and Queen Latifah. <laughs> I don't think so. No, so here's the story, right? I was going to watch Iron Man 1 in theaters. Mm -hmm. But I, so so at the time I didn't, I couldn't drive. I was just too young. So I took a bus to that part of town where the movie theater was. But I went there early and was basically just sitting and not doing anything all day. So I watched Iron Man at like noon. Got out of Iron Man. Was like, I still have you know, two or three hours until I need to do what I need to do, went and snuck into the oh. Forbidden Kingdom, which is the movie is uh, starring... Tom Cruise? It, no, no, it's Jackie Chan and Jet Li. I think it's the first movie those two guys were in, and it's it's okay. based on Journey to the West. I think Jet Li is literally like the Monkey King or whatever in that movie. Um, and then I left that movie, so I snuck into Forbidden Kingdom. The only reason I saw Forbidden Kingdom because I snuck in for free because I already bought a ticket to Iron Man. And then I went and watched Iron Man again. <laughs> After that, <laughs> so I have seen a movie based on Journey to the West, but it was between seeing Iron Man two times. Nice, so very fun. Like fifteen yeah. year old me having a good time. I'm having a blast with this game. And in fact, something else on my list, D Destiny. Tried to play that today, just to go in and like get some strange coins because you can now get exotic class items with random rolls from Zur, and it's the weekend and all. Joel, this kind did of you answer that text about joining? In? Didn't what? I didn't ask Joel? I've I've written Joel off. I've written Joel off now. Let, yeah. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, I, I played ignored. three quarters of I played three quarters of one strike, and my internet dipped out for like two minutes. Mm. I was like, "Fuck, well, let me play something offline." More Wukong. Jump right back in. Played like an hour and a half of that straight. So, yeah, I'm liking this game a lot. Very nice. Uh, MC is Minish Cap playing that i am um done with three dungeons about to find my fourth we'll talk more about it in two weeks on our barf episode speaking of barf backlog accomplishment with respawn and friends that's a game that you all chose for us over on patreon.com slash respawning fire and on twitter.com slash respawning fire fun fact the poll for next month is up right now oh. so you can go there and vote for what we're going to play next week you have six days from when we're recording this to tell us what we're playing in the month of September. Uh, so go there. Your vote counts significantly more over at patreon.com. But uh, we have a poll over on Twitter too. If you want to, all of that gets broken down into one vote from Twitter that then gets cast into the Patreon ballot as well. 
all of those games are games that I don't think I've ever heard of. Something about, I don't know, some guy wears a tie and so, I don't know. So it was Cozy's turn to pick because you stole his last month. And right, he right, He decided right. to do what are games that were released by Limited Run Games this year. So it's like, shit. I got the list up. Yeah. It, so, yeah. so the four games, also games I've never heard of. I've heard uh, of them, they're weird. Plumbers Don't Wear Ties Definitive Edition. RZ. Oh, that's right. That's the, the, the anime titty game that he talked about last week. Okay. RZ, The Jewel of Faramore. Penny's Big Breakaway, which I feel like I have heard of. I've heard of that one. That's not what it is, Tumba, but I've heard the name. Okay. Toomba Special Edition. Toomba Tomba? I don't know Tomba. how you say it. That's the only reason why I know about this game is because they said it on Games Daily like a week and a half ago. And they don't know. How do you say this? Toomba Tomba Tumba or something? I know nothing outside of nobody knows how to say the name. Now, all of these <laughs> were, whenever you guys went to play Rugrats at PAX East, these were yeah. all at that booth because that's the limited run. Uh, so okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. I, cool. It's again. I love cozy. What an interesting pick of games for us to play. <laughs> dope, dope. So go vote. Make sure it's a good one. Um, what else is on this list? GW, y'all. I knocked it last week. I think we never pulled it together. I love Garden Warfare. Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare was on Game really? Pass. But no, no, it's Gears of War. <laughs> Gears of War. Gears Wednesday. Gears of Wednesdays. Uh, kicked off this week. We thought it wasn't going to happen, and then Dallas is like, surprise, I'm actually here this week and on vacation next week. Mm. And uh, then Joel was like, I'm not at a wedding again. And so, uh, yeah, me and Matt and Joel and Dallas all sat down on Wednesday, and we played through like 80% of Gears of War 1 in, what, three hours? Yeah, three uh, hours. We did uh, three of the five acts in the game. So, yeah. yeah, we're really going through. I completely forgot about this. It wasn't even on my list. <laughs> uh, I've, I've played this game so much to where I... So, I'm playing with Dallas, and Chad is playing with Matt, because there's only two-player co-op. And I I don't one. know for sure, but I think that I have gotten Dallas every cog tag collectible in the game so far. Because, like, every time I get somewhere, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a cog tag over here. I remember so I'm curious when we finish the game if I have found all of them for him or if we missed some. Well, I am benefiting from you telling Dallas because what's really interesting is that we're playing these games simultaneously, like side by side, all in the same group chat. So I can hear Joel say, hey, Dallas, there's a cog tag over here. And I'm like, where? Over by box? Oh, let me go run in my <laughs> game and get it. Um, so yeah, that's that's fun. It's a good time. We'll continue that through all of the, gu- the Gears of War games. So how do those that feel takes. now that they're, you know, almost almost Lumpy. 20 years old yeah there's some mechanics that like tapping a to get behind cover and then a to then vault feels weird like you have to tap a twice to vault over shit i'm just so used to that um, <laughs> it's just the controls what yeah. we should also talk about is we were waiting for Dallas to get on and we played multiplayer oh yeah and oh <laughs> man oh man adam just if play you want to feel right? yeah yeah here's a word definitive edition yeah and I will say, found us matches immediately every time. Like, no problem yeah. finding a match. People still but playing. The, play, the players in the lobby, like, I was level 18 or something, which is not a high level. And Chad and Matt are level 1. But then there are people in here that are level, like, 80-something or, <laughs> you know, just higher level. And, like, clearly, these people cannot be having a good time with us on their team. The other team was having a blast. The other team getting so many kills. Not, not our team. <laughs> but... And, and, and I was getting game invites from people in the game in like messages like, yo, invite me because people are probably just desperate to squat up in this like six year old game at this point. Just like anybody, please play. Or they with probably me. see want... you sherpaing two level one people. Like, oh, this guy must be good. His level's only 18, but he's. he's no, lying. there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. So, yeah, that's fun. And the, another weird thing running, like you're holding down the A button to run. And, like, you can't run and also use the right stick at the same time to change it. So it's, like, you crouch, run really fast, and then you have to let go of run if you want to change what direction you're going. Well, yeah, rodeo yeah, run. Like, like, yeah, 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 rodeo yeah. run. There you go. Thank you. No, they did. They had never no, heard of rodeo running. Yeah, yeah. No, I had never heard that before. I mean, it's the thing where I've, been, I've played it for so long, I just know how that controls. It is what it is. That's how Adam yeah. used to run the mile back in high school. Yep. Just get down as slow <laughs> as you can and you go faster if you're closer to the earth, you know? Yeah, you the time have to, to reload, stand up, though? take a breath, and then turn. <laughs> 
timed reloads, I got used, you know, you reload the button and then if you hit it at the exact same the right moment, it reloads fast and gives you a stronger mag the next time. Like, I, I was so good at those. Matt was struggling like crazy. Really? Though. Yeah, he's like, I, I love haven't that. gotten those right ones. Yeah, it's great. Fun. Having a good time. And still, surprisingly, like, I don't know whether what the original non-definitive edition looks like, but like, still looks really good. I mean, you're going to learn pretty quick when we get to Gears 2 how bad... 360 games probably. Oh, because two didn't get remastered. Okay. No, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, last one on here. R is for rebirth, y'all. My journey is coming to an end. Okay. I have 153 hours in it now. Jesus Christ. I have officially done every single fucking thing in this game and gotten every single trophy except the hard mode trophy. I spent literally about 20 hours just doing the last like 10 combat challenges in uh fucking chadley's combat simulator old chadley and of course you had to do those to get the f one fucking collectible to bring to johnny and it was just like whoo almost broke me a couple of times but for anyone who's trying to do these there's this one guy over on youtube and he's like i don't know he's like has a irish accent or something like that mm -hmm. he speaks really slowly you're gonna start one of his videos and you're like please dear god just like talk any faster but then you'll realize that he has all the strategies that work. Don't go to anyone else's site and use their strategy. They all fucking suck. But this guy, you just replicate what he does one for one. You'll get through all these things. It's going to be fine. It's going to be great. But yeah, what rebirth. are you laughing about over there? I'm laughing because I pulled up the yeah, cats, types right? Final I uh, pulled up Final Fantasy VII Rebirth gameplay, and it's just like Tifa playing a piano and cats rolling around on the ground. And I'm like, <laughs> this is a terrible representation of what this game is as a whole. And that's what I'm showing the people right now. Love it. You know what I really Love hate? It. Not that I hate, but it's weird. So what did you just say? It was Chadley and John. You had to go take the... Johnny. Chadley and Johnny. Don't you? Because, yeah. you know, people were making fun of this. Where it's like Star Wars. It's like all these crazy ass names. And then there's a motherfucker named oh, Kyle. Oh, yeah. There's exactly, yeah. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, oh, so there's Lando, the there's Anakin, there's, there's Leia, Kylo. and Luke. Yeah. But then Final Fantasy, it's like, oh, I'm Cloud. I'm Sephiroth. There's Johnny. What? <laughs> Why is Johnny hanging out with Sephiroth? These just don't make any sense. Cloud Strife. I'm Chad. What the fuck is this yep. video game? Chad Lee. You mean Chad so, Lee? Chad Lee. Me. Yeah, that Chad Lee. Exotic. Yeah. My bad. Well, right. technically, I'm pretty sure Johnny is new for this remake series. There's a guy and named Chad Zach is in absolutely that video game. New. There's a Cloud Strife's best friend is Zach a is Zach. canon in the original game, so that's yeah, that's yeah. They play Jesus yeah. Christ, Lord of Nazareth. <laughs> hung, hung out with Brad the other day. It was a great yeah. time. Fun fact. Fun fact. Johnny was in the original Final Fantasy VII. Chad wasn't. He just was nowhere near. Oh, yeah, he was like he was like for two seconds very... in one of the towns or something like that. Yeah, maybe probably. Was it, yeah, maybe at the fucking market. I think next to Megan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you go, where you go to go see Tifa strip on stage or something like that at the the market. I think he was outside of it, like, oh, all I want to do is go inside and see Tifa naked, and they're like, that's all you ever see of Johnny in that entire game. Tifa, Aerith, and Megan. That <laughs> Megan, no, it was just... it's Yuffie. <laughs> Wild. Anyways, um, yeah. So that's that's everything I played this week. Which brings us to Save Me From Adam, yeah, Save Me From Adam, Save Me Money Oh To That Poop On My Face, Money <laughs> On My Face From To That Ass, And I Shoot The Poop Back Into Her Ass Cause It Is Money. Okay. Oh man, what a Toad was legit shooting money into her ass. <laughs> At her. At her ass. <laughs> no, it was going into her ass. What you saw on the ground were his first attempts that he did. I just hit. I really love in that, that video Browser uh, not Browser. Bowser's voice. Bowser just hanging out. Oh, he's just, Bowser's in the strip club. Good time. Uh okay. this week, segment from Adam. We're doing another meta madness because we won't be doing a show next week. So I'm like, well, That's it's true. time to talk about the best games of the month and then go over our fantasy critic league. <laughs> it might not be as different as you think it is. <laughs> Cozy. You know what I love? We're going to get to it. Just keep this in okay. mind. Okay. Okay. Joel, especially because he's new. Cozy is so confident in himself. He's like, Adam, I guarantee by the end of the, at the, end of the year, I'm going to be within five points of you in the fantasy critic league. I'm like, Oof. Chad's even like, are you crazy? But anyways, <laughs> we'll get there. These are the best games rated for August. That have come out so far. Uh, we won't have obviously a Star Wars score because it hasn't come out yet. But anyways, thank goodness you're here. 
sitting at a 90 on Metacritic. One of the best reviewed games of the year. That's the uh, the platformer game where you're the little man and you're in Britain. And it's very funny and very goofy. It looks like Cartoon Network, but if it was in Britain. It's a fun game. Next up, Tactical Breach Wizards at an 89. World of Goo 2 at an 86. Goo! World of Goo 2! Goo 2. Cat Quest 3 at an 81. And Black Myth Wukong also at an 81. Steam World Heist 2 at an 80. So a pretty solid month, especially at the top of that list. Boys, is there anything you think people have to play for Game of the Year or something that intrigues you for potentially the best games that come out this year? Well, I already mentioned Black Myth Wukong is like, that's my that's my new, I'm into this hardcore, thinking about playing it all the time game. Does but also think this year here is something I want to maybe dip my toe into. What were you saying, Joel? So does Marvel Rivals count? Because that's coming out in December. Is that after the Jeff Keighley cutoff, I assume? Well, I'm talking that about is for after our the Keighley cutoff, yeah. It is after the Keighley cutoff, but for our game of the year, are things we need to play. I mean, it's yeah, still I mean, Marvel Rivals, you know? Yeah, that's that's going to be a great game. I'm excited. I haven't even played it yet. I've just seen a lot of videos. That's very good. Yeah. Anything on Is here? it still, is it like continue, like big old free open beta forever until it comes out? Or is no. it no, beta closed. closed now? It's okay. been closed. Yeah, yeah. So I was so mad I couldn't get in. Uh, I will say, I'm, so I'm interested in Black Myth. Personally, I'm interested in Steam World Heist because it's a tactics game. But thanks for goodness, you're here is a, is a ton of fun. I like the demo that I played a long time ago. Apparently, it's like a three-hour game. So I would say Black Myth and thank goodness you're here. Maybe you'd be surprised. Maybe you'd actually really enjoy it, guys. I, don't, I haven't played Tactical Breach Wizards, but I have heard really, really good things about it. Seems like a thing I'd be into. I don't care about Let's, World of Goo. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me do a little Google search. Tactic. Oh, hold on. Not in the tab that has our games up. Uh, Adam, what, what what is Thank Goodness You're Here? I've never seen this before. Oh, man. Yeah, so it's basically, um, legitimately, think of hmm. Cartoon Network had a, a show that was based in Britain, and that's what the game is. Basically, it's a, it's a platformer where your only buttons are jump and slap things, and you're just like this itty-bitty dude, and you just like, you go through the town helping people, but then it's like the British comedy is fucking heavy, heavy as hell. So, yeah, it's like a little cartoon platformer game, but it's like fucking just weird ass fucking british humor the entire time for three hours um i think you might enjoy it you know that's what i say it's it is weird it is a weird pitch but check it out uh and then speaking of all that stuff now we're going to go into a recap for fantasy critic league so joel at the beginning of the year we all drafted five games you know fantasy critic uh fantasy critic dot games is the website where you draft video games, and based on their open critic score, you get points. And again, we started this year off, and Cozy was so fucking full of himself. He thinks he's the greatest <laughs> thing since sliced bread. Chad is respectful and understands that the game, you know, some people are Chase Daniel and some people are Tom Brady, and Chad understands he's a backup quarterback. There's nothing wrong with that. I 100% understood that reference. Yeah, I understand. Joel I am a backup it. quarterback named Chase Daniel. Yep, Chase Montana. Uh, so, right. So we have a couple new games uh, coming out. Speaking of World of Goo, Goo 2, that is a game that Cozy had. It got him 12 points. That's an 82 on Open Critic, specifically. Um, he counterpicked Indiana Jones, which is now confirmed to come out this year. So it just depends on score if that hurts him or helps him. Um, and I think that's everything. No, no, excuse me. He has Indiana Jones, and it was countered. I counterpicked him, yeah. My gotcha. So now I, you're probably hoping for it to get delayed or maybe not score well, right? No, I'm not score well. It doesn't look great. Honestly, yeah, it doesn't look good to me. I don't know if it goes below 70, but I don't think it gets like a 90 or anything. So, yeah, only thing he has one more. So, Cozy currently 60 points. Keep that in mind. Cozy has 60 points yeah. and half of his games have been scored. <clears throat> Moving well, on to... not not quite half. Only four of the ten. Well, almost half. Yeah, you're right. 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 So, yeah. Moving on to Boobysoft. Because I'm in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Chad's team. Uh, and only thing new that got uh, rated on here is Black Myth Wukong, which got you 11 points because it's an 81 on Open Critic. Um, you believe? So I know we talked about you picked up Dragon Quest, you picked up Dragon Age, and you picked up Neva. Right. We still don't know about the Neva release date, but nobody can counterpick you, so you're fine on that. Right. You can drop it if you want to. Neva, Chad. they're still saying it's 2024. So I hope so. The game looks good. And again, I'm not going for Adam. I'm. I know I'm not going to get anywhere near Adam. I'm just looking to beat Cozy. Yeah. And I've got some. I've got some heavy hitters here for the rest of the that. year. I think we'll you see. You, you know what's funny though is like if you beat Cozy, that's a win for you. 
But if Cozy beats you, he still doesn't win because he's aiming for Adam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a lose-lose for Cozy. Absolutely. Uh, but Chad is sitting at 33 points with his four games scored. So a little bit behind Cozy, but he's got time to make up. Um, speaking of scores, we're looking at what's left of Embracer Group. Still the best... The best name on the list. Oof. Actually, no. Boobysoft is probably the best name on the list. Boobysoft's fucking fire. <laughs> Four, five, six. So I have six games scored. Um, no new scores to report. I'm still waiting on Astrobot to come out, which should probably do pretty well for me. Uh, God, that's my, in like two weeks. Oh, I yeah, can't it's wait. very soon. I have Flight Simulator and then Rise of the Golden Idol and Hollow Knight. I'm still waiting for Hollow Knight. It, that one got counterpicked. I'm just hoping. I don't fucking know, man. Like, I can't drop it. Well, I can't drop it now anyways, but I would not drop it just in case it came out because I'd be an idiot. You know what I'm saying? If, if it doesn't yeah. if it doesn't come out, what does the counter pick get? It just, goes to, points? it just goes to zero. I get zero for it, and he gets whoever counter picked it, which is cozy, just gets zero as well. That's right. kind of well, like the strategy. If you don't trust that a game's going to be the, bad, you just yeah. want a game that doesn't come out this year. Gotcha. The way we set ours up, you have to counter pick something. If you don't counter pick something, you get like minus 20 points or something. Yeah. And then if that thing does well, like gets positive points, you lose the, that a number of points, right? Yeah, you'd go negative. And then if it does, if it that game does poorly, then you gain that number of points. The problem is and, with only yeah. three people, not very many people have bad games. Yeah. So that's kind of the the risk you take. But like, yeah, if Hollow Knight comes out, like Cozy's gonna get like negative fifteen, negative twenty points, easy. But if it doesn't come out, he's even. But with my six games ranked, uh, I have one hundred and twenty points. Literally double what Cozy has, but he yeah. is convinced he's going to beat me and come back. But 60% of your games are out and only 40% of his are. Yeah, so. that's right. No way Astrobot or Flight Simulator scores well. Astrobot could be delayed to <laughs> 2025. Yep. Uh, yep. So uh, my games are going to have to do super, super bad, and Cozy's games just have to just fucking explode in the last all bangers. six that he has. All bangers. Yep. Yeah, all 90 pluses. Yeah. We'll what see, if Hollow Knight but- comes out and scores a 20? And that I brings would. you down to that. That fixes the score issue. If Hollow Knight came out was a twenty, I will retire. <laughs> <laughs> just in general, just as a human being. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I just wanted to bring it up because Cozy is really confident, and I don't. It's fun. Like I'm having fun. Like it's a bit, but also like you have no chance. Like please stop acting like you have a chance, Cozy. Like you don't. <laughs> like we're, it's fun. We're having a bit. And we love you, but really just stop saying it because you're making yourself look silly. That's my segment. Wow. That brings us to Game On Game Show. The Game On Game Show. We play a game called Game On. The Game Show on our Game Show. Game, 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 game. We have a new game tonight, fellas. This one will probably go pretty quick, I think. Um, It's a new game called Game Shark. And it is a game where you all are going to pitch a game to me. And I'm going to be a shark that might or might not invest in your game for some amount of money for a percentage of your company. Like Mr. Um. I am Mr. Well, he's no longer part of that, isn't it? Right? He's leaving it? I he's left it? Shark show. Tank? <laughs> I don't know. I, th- I think I saw a headline in a news app that said, now that Mark Cuban's not on Shark Tank, they should, re- like, should we should refresh all the sharks or something. Anyway, Game Shark is what we're playing. But here's the twist. I have three different um, lists of things from which you will all get one of each thing. One list is a genre. One list is one of the top 12 grossing IPs of all time. And the third list is an ESRB rating. And so we will uh, have a random number generator generate numbers for each of you on on what genre, IP, and rating that you are going to do. And you have to pitch me that game. Okay. And it's basically best pitch wins, and that's it. Um... I feel like I don't want to do the number generator for you, but you maybe it doesn't. I guess it doesn't matter either way. Yeah, you just do it. It's fine. We'll trust you. All right. All right. Well, just fucking yell out a number. Adam, give me three numbers. The first one being one to 12. We'll stop. We'll do this one at a time to make okay. the instructions clear. Give me a number one to 12, including three. one and 12 whole integers. Cool. You have an action adventure game. Okay. Joel, you can no longer choose the same number that Adam chose. Let's go 10. All right, uh, 10 years is a stealth game. So, Adam, you are an action-adventure game. Joel, you're a stealth game. Give me another number, 1 to 12. Adam. Give me 12. You are playing a Spider-Man game. Oh, oh I think this might Spider-Man. be pretty easy. Hmm. Action-adventure Spider-Man. Joel. I'll go 1 8. To 12. 8. You are giving me a Wizarding World game. So you have a stealth 
Harry Potter Wizarding World game. And then Adam, give me a number one through five. Two. Two. You are making a mature Spider-Man game. Oh, yeah. Action adventure. Uh, Joel, give me a number one through five. Four. Four. E10 Plus is your game. So Wizarding World E10 Plus stealth game is what you're giving me. Um, I will give you all a moment to think about what you want your game to be while I tell folks about patreon.com slash respawn aim fire. This is a place where you get all sorts of cool things. We've already talked about barf games and how you get your chance to vote for what we play each month. As we mentioned, we're playing Zelda the Minish Cap right now on Game Boy Advance. And we will be talking about that in two weeks when we come back from our Labor Day break. Uh, if you want to be on that show and talk about it with us, you absolutely can. Uh, just send us a message somehow. Get word to us that you want to be on it. We will answer that call and probably get you on the show somehow. Uh, if you also have thoughts, if you've been playing it, I know there are people out there playing it. I know it. Dane DZ, owner of Dane DZ's Balls. I know you're playing it. Send us your thoughts. Email them in. Whatever you want to do. Um, while you're there, you also get exclusive access on patreon.com slash respawning fire to our monthly RAF game show. The f This month, you have access to the Game Athlon, not the Olympics, but four other gaming events that uh, four wonderful individuals whose names I will never remember now on purpose. I promise myself that I will never remember the names of everyone who's on that show. Two of um, them are here. <laughs> including my own. Um, that's out there right now. It's a good old time. Some great visual fun stuff going on. And then if you are not a patron, you get access to finally last month's July's video, which is me and Joel going head to head. Now who wants to be a millionaire style locked and loaded and Adam's there from space and time and different dimensions. So that's all available. Go to patreon.com slash responding fire, uh, vote on what game you've never heard of. We're going to play this month. All right, gentlemen. Because Adam chose first, I'm going to make Joel pitch first. Joel, tell me about your E10 Plus um, right. fucking Wizarding World stealth game. All right. So this is a Ministry of Magic stealth game. Ooh, already you play intrigued. as a Ministry of Magic agent um, that is not named because I can't think of a name. His name is Is Elvis. it a creative character or is it a, a, like an actual thing? No, it's it's an actual thing um, okay. that somebody will make up that is smarter than me, who knows okay. more about Harry Potter and the Wizarding World. But yeah, it's a Ministry of Magic game where you're a detective and you're trying to solve a crime. And in solving the crime, you kind of go rogue a little bit. You know, you bend some rules. You got to sneak around some areas that you're not supposed to be. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's 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 the premise. You're solving a crime of okay. Of who killed? I don't. I don't fucking know. Who killed somebody? <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's rated E ten plus because there is a, a scene where you're sneaking around um, and you see drugs, but you don't actually see the <laughs> drugs. It's just like heavily implied that these people are like dealing drugs in the Wizarding World. So okay. that's where the E ten and older rating comes from. Because it's just uh, suggested that, you know, highly suggestive that there are drugs um, in the wizarding world. And yeah, th th that's the are game. Are they muggle where... drugs or magic drugs? All. All. It's kind of like Whoa. a laced thing. It, like, oh, they're they're kind of okay. laced in together. So okay. that, you know, you kind of you get, you know, like Hannah Montana, right? Best of both worlds kind of deal going on. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's that's the game. Think L.A. Noir, but Wizarding World and drugs and murder, um, and yeah. murder. Okay, okay. What time period are we set in right now? N none. <laughs> none. Great. Are there are there any particular cameos we should be looking forward to? No. <laughs> Honestly, I love that. <laughs> One of my favorite things about uh the fucking Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy is that we didn't have to worry about being tied to the baggage of harry potter all right all right that was a pretty that was a pretty good pitch pretty good pitch i enjoy the lace drugs i'm enjoying <laughs> just <laughs> the murder i'm enjoying the fact that we're not tied to the ip already so um adam 
Tell me about your action-adventure Spider-Man mature game. All right, so here's my idea. Again, action-adventure. This will make more sense in in a moment. Basically, Spider-Man has been Spider-Man for, I don't know, a handful of years. Like, he has his rogues gallery. Like, we have dealt with and and fought multiple people. The game starts, though, as we are walking out of prison or out of some containment unit. One of the baddies has been let go. He seems to be rehabilitated or maybe he's breaking out or whatever. And as this man escapes... Well, actually, let's say he gets broken out. Yeah, he gets broken out by some big uh, octopus arms. As this man gets broken out, a little piece of a little goop falls on the ground. Goes over to another man in a fellow jail cell. Takes over his body, right? Like, oh, what's going on? We're seeing Spider-Man characters. We're seeing villains. We're doing this. We know Spider-Man's on the news. He's fighting this guy, whatever. The guy who just escaped, Eddie Brock, Venom. What got left behind is the symbiote that eventually becomes Carnage. This is a game where you play as Carnage okay. in an open-world action-adventure game where Spider-Man is dealing with villains. They're basically, the idea is, it's a mature rated video game, right? And Carnage mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. fucked up. So the idea is that you're going to be very violent, very deadly. You're going to be murdering people. So there's going to be this idea of that, like Venom eventually like regrets what he has done and like Eddie Brock is trying to redeem himself. Him and Spider-Man team up. Carnage is like, fuck both of y'all. I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to fuck up Vulture. I'm going to fuck up Electro. I'm doing whatever I want to do. And the kind of the idea is, what is the name of that video game where it was the open world video game and you had like the weird alien powers? <sighs> they made two of them. Prototype. Hmm? Prototype. Prototype. It is absolutely, it is prototype except for your carnage and you're murdering and consuming people to add them to your symbiote army and it is violent and brutal as hell and you get to be the bad guy and eventually take down your father, aka Venom, and the one who started it all, Spider-Man himself. Uh, yeah, and you get to be the fucked up bad guy consuming and eating people. The game called Ultimate Carnage. <laughs> called Let There Be Carnage. <laughs> let, no, no, no. Ultimate Carnage. Ultimate <laughs> game Carnage. called Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, the movie, the game. Well, because this thing, there was an SNES game called Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage. So I just mm-hmm. want to up that and go Ultimate Carnage. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Because it's the idea Adam. of Spider-Man and Venom teaming up to fight Carnage, but this time we are Carnage. I gotta say, I'm unimpressed. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. We've got, we've got in the in the way that I was impressed by Joel not sticking with Harry Potter baggage, I am very much wishing we stayed in the Spider Man lore, like Eddie Brock. That literally and Venom. is Spider Man lore. I, but I mean, the Spider Man video game universe. That oh, we've I didn't want to do Insomniac. Right I could have done Insomniac. I don't I, want to do Insomniac. I know. Because then didn't, I would just also, made the Venom game. I would have just been the Venom from Insomniac, like they're already going to do. But they're already doing that. Yeah. Chad. I'm thinking outside of the yeah. box. Yeah. I'm just. I'm so invested in that right now. But that's just. That's that's just, that's a knock against you. But you also mentioned prototype. Yeah. I was very much an infamous kid. And you know those were headed you you choose team prototype, you choose team infamous. One and that's, or the other. that's all you got. And I was an infamous kid. So like that's two things going against you. And I mm. I gotta say right now, Joel's has drugs. Yours is an M-rated game. You could have actually named your drugs and gotten away with it. Well, you don't think Carnage is doing blow? <laughs> Come on now. It's the same. We didn't it's see implied. It in the pitch. It's implied. We didn't see blow. It in the pitch. He eats a If there head, was blow. <laughs> There's completely unrelated. Joel won. Completely unrelated. Uh-huh. <laughs> there is, this is not funny, but it's kind of funny. There's a serial killer from Charlotte, North Carolina <laughs> in the early 90s. Uh-huh. I just learned about the serial killer a few days ago they were, because they were called the Taco Bell Killer. Taco Bell Killer. And I was like, and I thought my, you know, it was going in the family text message thread and someone showed a picture of Park and like, oh, that's right across from the house where the Taco Bell Killer lived. And I was like, oh. I can't wait for this documentary about whatever this Taco Bell oh, killer is. And they were like, you, you no, that's mean real. Henry Lewis Wallace? Exactly. Henry Lewis Wallace. And then they were like, there are many documentaries. I was like, what? So I watched the show called Bad Henry, which is, you know, an hour and a half show. And it is like a, it is a, a, a kind of low budget, you know, like crime documentary detailing the murders of, of uh, Henry and the Taco Bell killer. Um, but the detective, the lead detective on the case is funny as shit. There are so many good one-liners in there that he says in complete earnesty. And so, first of all, one of the first things in the entire documentary itself, it goes, in the spring of 94 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, spring came to, ni- to Charlotte, North Carolina in 1994. And also, so did murder. 
And it was just like, all right, I'm in. I'm hooked. <laughs> and then this guy, this little lead detective gets on the screen. And he's like, all right, you know, at first we were looking for somebody who is, you know, it's it's the 90s, crack epidemic. Everybody's a crackhead. So we're out there looking for a crackhead. You can get out there and you can sell anything for drugs. And I was just like, fucking the best. Um, so, yeah, don't watch that show. But there's a Taco Bell killer in Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, there was in the 90s. And they caught him now like 25 years later. He's also been dead. Apparently, my years. sister and dad had something to do with them catching it. I have to catch up with them and figure out what it was all about because that's why it was even in the family thread. But uh, interesting. They did not show up in the talk in the documentary, so maybe they're just liars. Who knows? But that's it for Game on Game Show, and that is it for episode three hundred and sixty something of Res- three sixty six of Respawn Aim Fire. Uh, we've already talked about Patreon, so uh, go do that if you haven't done it. Why haven't you done it? If you did do it, create a second email address. Get a second bank account. Don't tell your partner about it and then do it again. Don't tell your partner. Subscribe to us on patreon.com slash responding fire. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. You have a couple pieces of homework outside of Patreon. If you're at PAX, go see Adam at the Frog Theater on Friday night. It's August the number. Go see that on Friday night, uh, 9 p.m. Um, if you see Cozy out in the wild... <laughs> Take a picture and tweet it at us at Respawn Aim Fire. Uh, let us know that you caught him a picture. It could be a candid picture too, or you could be posing with Cozy. It doesn't matter. Whatever it might be, just send us a picture at Respawn Aim Fire. Uh, and that's it, everybody. And also, if you watch the Don't Save Her Mario video, watch the one that's a minute and 27 seconds. Don't watch the four minute long cut where it zooms out into some creepy ass fucking Sims shit. Don't do that. Watch the real one. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. Until next time, here's our usual sign-off. It was going in our ass. <laughs>